Hello? I don't know who's here yet, but I'm waiting a couple more minutes before we start. Just getting ready, making sure everything works, testing it out. Okay, everybody, so it's 8 o'clock, 8.01 actually, and I'm really excited to be here hosting my first ever live discussion on Facebook. Um, in case you don't know me already, my name is Stephanie Ilkich. I'm the director of Sunnyside Daycare as well as the preschool educator. I've been in the field for about 10 plus years now as an educator and even longer working mm -hmm. with kids uh, in different capacities. So I'm really excited to get started today. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can type them out while I'm talking or you can save them for the end. Um, but here we go. So today I'm going to talk about uh, just an intro to gentle parenting. Uh, basically, what is it? What is it not? Why do we do it? And a little bit about how we do it. Um, I won't necessarily talk about specific, uh, specific problems and stuff today. We'll get into those in future live episodes. So today will just be a general overview. So to start, I want to talk about why we do gentle parenting. Uh, I, sorry, what gentle parenting is. Uh, positive discipline, gentle parenting. Those are all ways of working with kids in a partnership as opposed to, you know, being the boss. Basically working with kids in a respectful way understanding them, showing them empathy, um, and realizing that they're just kids. They have lots to learn. Um, and basically we focus on the behavior and the causes of the behavior instead of the kid themselves. So what gentle parenting is not, because I know a lot of people say this when I bring it up, Gentle parenting is not permissiveness. It does not mean that kids are allowed to do whatever they want. That's a big concern when I tell people how we do things at Sunnyside, how I believe we should treat children. Um, so we basically still are there to provide boundaries to everyone, to the kids, sorry. We're still there to support them. We still have rules. We don't let them do everything, um, but it's definitely not letting them do whatever they want. Um, next, I want to talk about why we go in, why, why we believe that gentle parenting, positive parenting is the way to go. The number one reason is because we want to treat kids like human beings. They are just people, just like we like we are, except they have a lot less experience, a lot less understanding of how the world works. Um, and it's really, really easy as adults to take that for granted. Um, you know, even as adults, we have rough days, we have bad days, and we already feel bad when we, let's say, get home from a rough day of work and take it out on someone. Um, or if we are having a rough day and take it out on a cashier, we still feel bad and we don't need somebody to punish us for it. So we, that's one of the reasons we do this is because we know that kids are learning. And often when you see a four year old hit someone or bite someone, well, okay, maybe not a four year old, but a two year old bite someone, 
they do feel bad afterwards and they couldn't necessarily control that hitting. So the fact that they're already feeling guilty, they're already feeling bad means we don't have to dogpile, you know, because if I lock my keys in the car or I take it on a cashier and one of my friends was harassing me about it, oh, why'd you lock your keys in the car? You should have been responsible. It doesn't help anybody. And it's the same for kids. They're already, they already have so much to learn. They already have so many things to think about that punishing them, it just adds more stress to what they're doing and it doesn't necessarily help them learn anything. And on another note, we also, in gentle and positive parenting, wouldn't necessarily reward them for doing the good things because we want to treat them, again, like human beings. If I do something kind, if I help somebody pick up something they dropped, I don't need a pat on the back. Um, I don't need a reward. And it's the same for kids. We want them to learn to do things like clean up their room, get ready to go to school because they know it's the right thing to do. Not because they're waiting for a sticker on their sticker chart. Not because they're waiting for someone to say, good job. Because they realize that getting your shoes on to go to school or helping clear up the dinner table is just part of life. It's just part of living and being part of a family. Um, another reason that we do this is because we realize that kids just aren't uh, developed at the level we are. They don't have the impu impulse control we have. So they can't necessarily stop themselves from hitting their sibling because they just can't. The part of their brain that controls impulses hasn't even developed and it will not be developed until they're 20 years old, which is the same reason that we see a lot of teenagers, 15, 16 year olds still doing really silly things. That part of the brain is just not, not developed yet. Um, another reason that we use this type of discipline method, this type of positive parenting method, is because we realize that kids haven't experienced all these things yet. So to ex let's say they haven't experienced getting angry because some plans have been cancelled or things like that. So if they haven't experienced it yet, we can't really expect that they would know how to deal with it. We've had years and years and years of experience dealing with you know, uh, disappointments. And let's face it, some of us still don't take disappointment well. We still don't take criticism well. We still have trouble dealing with um, things that go wrong. So we want to make sure that our kids and the future generations have the tools to deal with it. A lot of our parents, um, not necessarily mine because my mom is watching and she was great, but a lot of our parents uh, spent time punishing us getting angry with us. Why? Because we were crying, because we couldn't take a joke, whatever reason it is. Um, a lot of our parents spend time punishing for us, punishing for uh, us for that, um, and not letting us feel those feelings that we had, not teaching us to cope with those emotions, rather teaching us to suppress them, hide them, get over it. Um, we don't want that for our kids. We want them to be adaptable. We want them to have the understanding, the tools they need to cope with their emotions. So that's another reason why we do this. Um, and last, the last thing I want to say about why we do this is because kids are all different. So punishing them because that's what we were taught doesn't necessarily work. Um, we can focus on the kids as individual and offer them help and support based on what we know about them. You know, if they really enjoy Paw Patrol, let's say, but they have trouble with with dealing with transitions, you can always explain time or with time, you know, kids have trouble with time and you want to explain to them, you can watch TV for half an hour. They don't understand half an hour, but by realizing that we can't, that they don't understand that we can't get mad at them when we turn off the TV after half an hour. So we can talk to them in terms that they would understand. So you can watch TV for one more Paw Patrol episode, let's say. So basically, kids are individuals, which is why everything we do is focused on them as a person, as a human being, just like when we deal with other adults in our life. Um, I do want to talk about how, uh, you know, nothing specific, basically 
a couple of tips and tricks to get you guys started. But before that, I want to say something very, very, very important. And all parents and all educators and everybody needs to hear this. We are all human. We all make mistakes. We all yell. We lose patience. We can't be perfect. And that's okay. I want you to all internalize that. That's okay. The important thing is that we learn from our mistakes. Yes, are we going to lose patience and yell at the kids because they haven't gotten their shoes out the door and we're going to be late for work? Maybe. But you know what? We can also apologize to them. And that is a bigger lesson than feeling guilty and worrying that you screwed up your kid because you didn't. I'm sure you've seen it. They're happy in like five minutes, right? So I want you all to remember that. Most importantly, we are all human. We're all going to make mistakes, especially in gentle parenting. It is not easy. Make no mistake, I'm not giving you a solution that's going to work in one day. Um, it's tough. You need to be very flexible. You need to just choose your battles sometimes to make it successful for all of you. But again, we are all human. We all make mistakes. So keep that in mind as I go through the how of what we do. I'm going to talk again very briefly about some of the hows. And in future, future live discussions, I'll be able to talk to you about specific examples and stuff. Of course, you can always ask some questions later on once I'm done talking. Um, I can talk for hours and hours and hours as this. And if you know me, you know that. But I will just talk about a few more <laughs> points. And then you can all feel free to ask me questions if you have. So the how. The number one way to be a positive parent, a gentle parent, is to model the behavior you want from the children. Uh, this is really, really important because if you get home and you yell at your kids because they are watching too much TV, for, for example, then it's hard for them to understand why you get mad when they yell back at you. If you get angry and slam the cabinet doors and the next time they're angry they throw something at the wall, it's going to be very, very hard for them to understand why you can do it and they can't. Um, you know, and I understand some parents are probably thinking, well, I'm the adult. In positive parent, it's not like that. In positive parenting, we are all humans, just like the kids. And I said that right at the beginning. So modeling is very important. If you want the kids to be appreciative, you model that appreciation. Um, hey, John, you know what? When I was sad before, you gave me a big hug and that made me feel great. There you go. You've modeled it. You haven't rewarded them. You haven't given them a punishment, but you've acknowledged something that they've done, just like you would to another adult, another human being. Um, so modeling the behaviors you want to see is very important. We can even take that a step further. Um, a lot of people who practice gentle parenting don't even force their kids to say thank you or please because they believe that it'll come naturally once you take the time to show them why it's important and to show them that it's feel good, that it feels good. So as an example, in my classroom, I, I won't withhold a cup or something if a kid doesn't say please. But I will make a big point of saying please and thank you when I speak to the kids. And you know what? If you come take a visit in my classroom, I think... Uh, You'll see that, that it is a community where the kids are very kind and gracious um, and appreciative. So it works. It's not easy. Uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about in terms of how is uh, choosing your battles. Choosing your limits, your boundaries, um, and your battles. And being flexible about all of that. What I mean is, you know... If you're getting ready to go to the car and it's 10 15 degrees out and your kid doesn't want to wear the cash coat the neck warmer in that moment in time you need to actually think about if it's worth the stress of arguing you know evaluate everything is the child going to be sick are they going to die of frostbite probably not they'll probably be healthy in the two second walk to the car so it's not a battle that is worth necessarily stressing everyone out. Of course, we all have different boundaries. We all have different lines. And, and maybe that is 
the line you want to the hill you want to die on and that's okay for for every family but if you find yourself in a lot of struggles with your child sometimes you need to step back and evaluate if it, um, if most of them are worth it because you know what if your kid doesn't want to wear matching socks um, you know it doesn't matter yeah as adults we don't have to no one's ever gonna say anything so it's not really really a big deal in that sense Again, everyone has different values. Everyone has different lines they draw. So whatever you think is important uh, works for you. But again, um, if you find yourself stressing over every single thing uh, or over tons and tons of things throughout the day, step back, look at what you're arguing about and ask yourself, are these things really important? Is it really worth the fight? Basically, don't sweat the small stuff. And you know what? It'll make everybody happier. Um, and along those lines, um, you want to make sure that your expectations of the kids are appropriate. Um, that's a really big part of positive parenting because if you go to a bank and you're waiting in line for an hour and your kid starts running around, that it's not appropriate to think that your three-year-old can stand in line for an hour without at some point starting to run or yell or screech or whatever it is they do. So really, you need when you're setting a limit that your child is consistently breaking, one of the things you would do uh, in positive parenting is reflect on the situation that's happening. Reflect on the boundary. Is it appropriate? Can a four-year-old sit at the table for two hours with all our family? Some might. There's always exceptions, but most can't. And you need to say, you need to ask yourself, if my child physically can't do this, is it worth the argument? Um, and the last how that I want to speak of today, the last how, uh, the last thing to think about when you're, um, when you're deciding on your boundaries and stuff, when you're practicing gentle parenting is, can you be flexible? You know, it's nice to set boundaries. Uh, and it's important. Kids need boundaries. So none of this is advocating just letting the kids do what they want. But if this is truly a partnership with your child, you need to ask yourself, how can I be flexible here? Yes, you know what? Maybe you have a routine where the child puts on their shoes, then watches a cartoon before you leave for school. But sometimes maybe the kid needs a break. Um, sometimes they have a legitimate reason for what they're doing. You know, you say we have to go to school, put on your shoes. The child if you give them time to talk, might say, but today there's a special on at 9 instead of 9.30 and I would really like to watch it before I put my shoes on. A lot of times we don't give kids that op opportunity. We don't let them say the things that are on their mind. So positive parenting is really about being flexible and being open to what the kids have to say. Um, so that's about it. That's what I prepared for the basics of um, parenting. Of gentle parenting I didn't want to talk too much this time because um, I'm sure some of you know that I could probably go on for all night if I needed to um, so I wanted to ask you guys if you have any questions as well I did put together a list of resources that I think would be really helpful to anybody who either wants to start learning about positive parenting or who wants to improve their skills a bit so I'll post that on the sunny side Facebook page. It'll be a Google link to a PDF. Um, so in the meantime, does anybody have any questions? And there's a pretty long delay here, so if I'm just sitting here um, not saying anything, it's because I'm waiting to see if anyone has any questions. So that's a, a great question that Laura has in the comments. Basically, uh, sorry, I'm reading on the computer to the side, but I'll look back in a second. Uh, basically, 
she gave a boundary about a snack. Um, basically, she set a boundary and she was wondering if giving in because he was freaking out uh, would have been okay. So there's a part of this that comes down to you know your child best. But what I think ultimately is exactly what you said would it have really mattered it's a snack so I mean if you if he was really overtired over hungry um, and that can help it why not you know giving a child something they need at this age doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be entitled I know that's the word that everyone likes to throw around um, what it actually does is show them that you respect what they need and you are there to support them and that's not always possible so in this case yes you know I, I would have given him the snack but you might be out and in the car and not have the snack with you anymore and that's where he'll learn to deal with the disappointment of not getting it but um, I really like that question because it's something that comes up often in daycares um, you know you expect all the kids to get dressed by themselves and one day the kid doesn't want to put on their boots it's okay to help them maybe they're tired maybe they need a hand it doesn't mean that they're gonna ask you to put on their boots for them every single day so a hundred percent I perfect I think it's it's okay to give in sometimes because it's not really giving in it's supporting the kids in what they need especially because when it comes to something like a snack I mean you say it yourself if they're over hungry um, that doesn't help anybody you know, we're, as I as adults we get hangry too right So I don't know if anyone else has any comments or questions. As usual, um, you can definitely find me on the Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Garderie Sunnyside, or on my personal Facebook page, facebook.com slash ECE dot Stephanie, S-T-E-F-A-N-I-I. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you everybody who came to watch today. Uh, in the future, feel free to let me know if you have any ideas for topics. And oh, that, So somebody just asked that in the comments and that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do the next comment on, uh, sorry, the next video. But if anyone has any topics, let me know and I will announce it as soon as I know. Um, it'll probably still be something pretty basic. Um, because I want to assume that everyone's still learning from the bottom. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody who came. Uh, and I will be seeing you in one month from now. And I should have probably checked the date before, but I will tell you right now. On February 25th, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Thank you. Have a nice evening.